الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى that he grants us the best of this coming month and that he makes it as a means for us to get closer to him and that he has mercy on us and he allows us to attain his pleasure and a distancing from his anger and his punishment. One of the things that is repetitive in the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us to ask him, commanding us to ask him and this is from the pinnacle of acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also as a form of asking in order to educate ourselves, to learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated in this religion. So you will find an ayah where it says, يَسَّلُونَكَ أَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ They ask you about the beginning of each lunar month. And this is relevant with the coming of Ramadan. وَيَسَلُونَكَ أَنِ الْيَتَامَ قُلْ إِسْلَاهٌ لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ They ask you about the orphans. And again, this is relevant because people will be looking and giving in sadaqah. And they increase, and rightfully so, during this month. Also, يَسْأَلُونَكَ أَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ They ask you about intoxication and gambling. And again, this is something that every single Muslim uh, would like to improve on in this month where they remove their sins and their shortcomings. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this question as well and tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قُلْ لِفِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ In them is a major sin, therefore it is made prohibited in Islam. وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ There is some good in it. وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا But its sin is far greater for mankind, therefore it is prohibited. Therefore this is something which is reoccurs in the Qur'an, something where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, commanding the believer to ask in order for him to become educated. Umar radiallahu an, in describing Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, Meaning, he, that is a young man, but he's extremely mature. He has an inquisitive tongue. And he has an absorbing heart, meaning of intellect and, and piety and, and intelligence. Therefore, what we learn as a description to one of the major companions from another major companion is that he was mature, he used to ask questions, and he used to then understand them uh, with, you know, a very intelligent mind. Uh, and obviously that was spearheaded by his piety anyhow. Therefore, these are just some of the narrations and some of the ayat which teach us the importance of asking questions. Now, there's a very important disclaimer. Who is it that we ask? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it as a condition that if you want to ask in order for you to attain knowledge... You can't just ask anyone. Allah tells us, Fas alu ahli dhikr in kuntum la ta'alam. Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. Allah tells us in another ayah in Surah Nisa, Wa idha ja'ahum amrun min al-amni awil khawfi, adha'u bih. You will find the munafiqun. When something new appears, whether it's something of security, so they want to spread a rumor uh, of happiness, or of something of sadness and something of anxiety and worry, you will find them hastening to spread this rumor without verifying, without seeking knowledge, without finding the correct stance. So Allah then says in the next part of the ayah, If only they look it back to the Messenger of Allah And those who are in authority over them, meaning the ulama amongst them. Then they would have known who have been able to give them the correct understanding. Had it not been for the grace of Allah upon you and His mercy, then surely you would have followed shaitan, all of you, except for a small number. Therefore, these are just some ayat also to give us another important principle in this religion, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only does he want us to ask in order for us to educate ourselves and learn what it is to attain his jannah and to attain his pleasure and to stay away from his anger and his punishment, 
But we need to ask those scholars and those students of knowledge who will help us to remain on the correct path because they are the ones who have got the correct understanding. Therefore, this Ramadan, bi'idhnillah, we will go through a book which has been published and gathered in the Arabic language and alhamdulillah has been translated into the English language, which is a book of question and answers with one of those noble scholars, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Saleh al Uthaymin. And in this book, he covers fatawa concerning the five pillars of Islam. So the book, the first section of it, talks about the pillar of shahada or the shahadatain. And then the next section about salah. And then the next section about zakat. Then the fourth section uh, about siyam. And that's what we're going to be concentrating on, inshallah. And then the, the, the two-volumed book, which is available in English, uh, ends with fatawa and question and answers on uh, issues containing uh, issues pertaining to uh, Hajj and Umrah, but in the fourth chapter, like I said, this is what we will be doing, inshallah, over the period of this month, uh, posting hopefully on a on a daily basis, short snippets, quick question and answers with answers from a scholar based on evidence uh, on a range of different topics connected to Ramadan uh, and fasting, and there are fifty six questions. Uh, that have been translated in the English version and if you do happen to buy the book it uh, begins, the section of, of fasting and Ramadan begins in volume 2 on page 625 so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant his tawfiq and we start in his name Bismillah ar question 392 what is the wisdom behind the obligation of fasting so this is the very first question when it comes to the fatawa pertaining to fasting. So the first question is, what is the hikmah? What is the purpose that Muslims fast? What is the reason? So he answers the shaykh. If we were to read the words of Allah the Most High, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O oh, you who believe, fasting has been made obligatory upon you, as it was made Obligatory upon those before you That you may attain taqwa And with this Arafna ma hiya al-hikmah min ijab as We will then come to know What is the reason and the wisdom behind The obligation of fasting in this religion It is wa hiya al-taqwa Wa ta'abud lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala Is to attain al-taqwa and to worship Allah, the most glorified and the most high. What is taqwa? Then the shaykh goes on to explain. Because this is very important. The whole point that we have this month, that we are going to make some sacrifices, that we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are trying to get closer to him, is to attain taqwa. And if we don't know what taqwa is, then the objective will be lost. As the shaykh is pointing out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has highlighted in this ayah. So taqwa means to abandon any unlawful deed, and without any exception, he completely abandons it. And it also includes a person doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded him to do. Therefore, a taqwa is to stay away from whatever is haram, and it is to do whatever has been enjoined upon him. And with this, we learn this definition, especially when it comes to fasting, the statement of the Prophet وسلم, as the Shaykh is pointing out here, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ Whoever does not give up lying وَعَمَلَ بِهِ And acting upon those lies وَالْجَهْلِ And any kind of ignorance or evil deed فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ هَاجَةٌ then Allah has no need for this person to fast, leaving his food and his drink behind. Based upon this, the obligation upon fasting for the fasting person is that he preserves his deeds. He should do those things which are obligatory upon him and stay away from those things which are haram, both in word and in deed. So this is the objective and the reason why the Muslim should fast. 
And then the Shaykh goes on to give examples. So he shouldn't backbite, he shouldn't lie, he shouldn't spread gossip, he shouldn't sell things and engage in transactions which are unlawful. He shouldn't leave anything which is haram once he's in the, the month of Ramadan and once he's fasting. He should be even more conscious uh, to the fact that his deeds need to be pure and good and more conscious to the fact that he is then going to be brought back in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and questioned. Therefore, in this month, it's a month of uh, worshipping Allah and reconnecting with him subhanahu wa ta'ala through our deeds and our actions, as the shaykh is saying here, rahimahullah. If a person does this, the shaykh goes on to say, if a person does this for the whole month, his soul will be upright for the rest of the year. However, what is unfortunate, that many people fast and they do not distinguish between the days that they fast and the days that they don't fast. They behave according to their normal habits and customs. And you will find them fasting but not establishing those things which are obligatory upon them. Or you will find them fasting but they will continue to engage in those things which are haram. And there is no one that does that except that the whole essence and the whole uh, uh, the bliss and the enjoyment of that fasting is removed from him the sheikh is pointing out here though if a person does sin his fast doesn't become invalidated you know hukman in a fiqhi perspective in a legislative way we're not saying that if a person was to abandon his obligatory deeds or fall into something which is haram, that his fasting is negated because there is no evidence that exists to uh, support that. However, it will reduce his reward. And possibly on the day when deeds are weighed, these sins that he continues to commit even during the month of Ramadan will outweigh the reward of his fasting. And he will lose any kind of benefit or purpose as to why he fasted. Why? The question is, what is the objective of fasting? Is that you may attain taqwa. That is the whole purpose. That you worship Allah and that you attain taqwa. That it helps you to prepare to return and stand in front of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person hasn't done that, then it may be that he has not fulfilled the objective. And it may be that he will not be rewarded for such. Uh, there's a disclaimer here though, we need to point out what the Sheikh is saying here is that if a person uh, falls into something which is sinful, it doesn't negate his um, his fasting. As he will point out later on, there are some deeds which could negate the fasting, such as completely abandoning the prayer. And inshallah we'll get to that uh, in another clip. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant his tawfiq and success. Hada wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين